Welcome everybody to the Bluegrass Breakdown Sports Show, and I am your lovely host tonight, uh, Matt McCarthy, and if you don't recognize myself, it's because I am normally not in front of the camera. I'm actually usually behind the camera doing some of the technical stuff in the back end, but that's what I like to do, and I'm a little bit uncomfortable in front of the camera, so you'll have to excuse me. But, the plan for the show today is to actually provide you with the best of the Bluegrass Breakdown, which includes some of our best interviews, clips, um, and just fun we've had on the show uh, within the last year. We're coming up to our year anniversary here, coming in the next month or two, and uh, we appreciate everyone who's actually come and viewed the show, watched it, and it's been uh, it's been a great 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 time, and uh, we do appreciate it. Secondly, I'm a bit under the weather, and that makes it even worse. But we're going to do the best we can. Um, but uh, first of all, what we want to do is we want to show you one of our favorite clips, and I know it's not football season. Um, and the fact that uh, uh, most people are raving about basketball right now, Anthony Davis, Michael Gilchrist, how well they're doing, and we'll get to that. But the main thing we want to do is we want to basically show you how we have a little bit of fun from time to time. And this has actually never been seen on the show. So uh, here we go. This is um, actually a clip that Tyler did, and he is uh, actually, again, maybe possibly going to call in today, but... Um, him and uh, J.J. Corbett, if you remember him, he's been on a couple shows of ours where he actually came out. And they did some interviews before the U.K. U of L game tailgating. So uh, here is that, and I hope you enjoy it. So for the radio, can I just get some predictions of tonight's game, the score? Uh, <laughs> come on. I know you True got UK I'd, fan. Say, I'd say Kentucky 26, Okay. Louisville 20. Blake Thomas, I need a score. Uh, let's go with... Uh, 28 to 18. Cats. Yep. Hey, it's Blake. It's real talk. Real talk. Yes, sir. I hope it's not test time at Kentucky because he just failed. Hold up, hold up. Am I on KentuckySports.co? Yes, sir. Let's go KentuckySports.co. I should have worn my blue man suit. I know it. This is the guy that took my blue suit, JJ. Where where are the wings at? Where are the wings at? (laughs) Hey, have fun, Blake. Hey, you're just going to have to go on and off. As people go by. How you doing? This is JJ Corbett live here at the tailgating section, and we have someone, a young guy here, that says he's the future announcer for UK football. Uh, what, what is your predictions for the game today? I'm going. I'm going 21-3. Josh Clemens uh, over 150 yards. <laughs> I, I say this kid needs to go to summer school, but that is a very good score. How about my Louisville guys here? What do you think about the predictions for today? What's going to happen, and what is going to be the I'm gonna score? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. What's going to happen is going to be the unexpected. We're going to win by a couple touchdowns. You heard it first right here. RV Row. This is it. I'm RV, RV Row sounds like the place to be right RV now. RV Row is the place to be. Mr. UK right there, we're going to win by two touchdowns. The sleeping well, giant. Well, you know, he, he was a well-speaking young man, but I really like your prediction a whole lot better. Where's my man at? How you doing? doing what, do you, what do you, you think is going to happen with the game tonight, and what do you think the score is going to be? How's this going to turn out tonight? Well, I think it'll be an interesting game, uh, without a doubt. Both, both teams are going to struggle initially in the first half. The second half, I think the Cardinals are going to uh, ultimately going to prevail. Probably be about a six to seven point game, honestly. You know, great minds think alike because I said the first thing about the first half. It's it's going to be slow going first half. Second half's going to be football. And I do want to mention that this guy probably has the greatest RV setup that I have seen yet. This is the setup if you are a Louisville fan right here in, in Tailgate Row. This is absolutely awesome. Who's tapping on the? What do you think is going to happen tonight? Tonight, I think the Wildcats are going to eat the Cardinals, and I think they're going to kick them out of the state, and I think that Kentucky is going to beat Louisville by 20 touchdowns. Well, I, t- I tell you what, you want to talk about an ambitious Kentucky fan. There is, this may be the most obnoxious Kentucky fan that the most obnoxious Louisville fan has ever met. 20 touchdowns. I, I, I'm telling you, 20 touchdowns is a feat. I'm telling you right now. When he, back on tailgate row, we're looking for game stats, and what do you think is going to happen in predictions on the score? What do you think is going to happen tonight, sir? I think uh, Kentucky's defense is going to be a little bit too much. Kentucky wins 24-17. 
Uh, you know what? You sound like a smart man, but I don't like the score. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk to the genius of the group here. What do you think is going to happen tonight? Let, let's hear what you got to say. I, I'm going to say, give me a C, give me an A, give me an R, give me a D, give me an S. Cards by three. That sounds like a very good football game. Okay, hey, oh, he's already spoke with us. Here we go, live back from Tailgate Row. What do you think is going to happen tonight, and what do you think the score is going to be? I don't think the Cardinals are going to get their ass kicked. <laughs> it's going to be 21 goose egg. <laughs> 21 goose eggs. Talk about somebody's had too many Miller Lights. <laughs> Moving down the line, what do you think is going to happen? What's the score going to be? 35-21, baby. 35, you know what? That is a very high-scoring game. Sounds like a high-octane game in your eyes. What do you think is going to happen? I'll tell you what, it'll be a tough game all the way around. As long as we come out tough on the first half, I believe UK will pull it off then. Uh, that, that sounds great to me. And ma'am, what do you think is going to happen? That's okay. What you, what you, what you, uh, spill the beer. Spill the party foul on the Louisville fan. I didn't mean to do it. Okay, here we are on tailgate row. What do you think is going to happen tonight and what do you think the score is going to be? I think it's going to be UK 31, U of L 27. I'll tell you what, it's gonna be a good ball that game. is a very good score, and that sounds like it's going to be a very good game. How about, what do you think, sir? I'm going to go with, uh, I'm not really, I hate to make this prediction because I'm a Kentucky fan, but I really think Louisville wins tonight. You know what, that is probably the most truthful thing I have heard all day. I am, we need to get rid of these guys. They need to go play in the playground. All right, we're back to Tailgate Row with a couple of fine U of L fans, and I just want to hear what do you think is going to you think's gonna happen tonight? What do you think the score is going to be? Uh, I'm going to have to go with we win by six. Win by I'm six. As long as it's a victory, it sounds good to me. What do you think is going to happen tonight? What do you think the victory is going to be? Oh, it's definitely going to be a close game today. 20 to 14, U of L. 20 to 14, U of L. I'll take it. All day long. At six. We'll All right, we're going to go ahead and get some Smelly Cat fans in here. Oh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and say the uh, game tonight. What do you think is going to happen tonight, and what's the prediction on the score? Uh, prediction on the score, 42 to 10, UK. 42 to 10. I think you're playing with Auburn's offense. Uh, what do you think is going to happen tonight? What do you think the score is going to be? 35-17. Like I said, some of these guys may think their team is Florida. Um, what do you really, realistically, what's going to happen tonight and what is going to be the score? 21-13. Louisville, thank you. Uh, very good. Back on uh, Tailgate Row here, what do you, who do you think is going to win the game today? I think Kentucky Wildcats. Yeah! Oh, that hurts, that hurts. What do you think is going to happen tonight and honestly, what do you think the score is going to be? Kentucky Wildcats all the way. It's going to be 43-30. Uh, to 30. 43 to 30. Once again, we got Florida offenses out here. Uh, what is your prediction? Oh, well, I, she's it, it's not a question. I think you can see it right here. Right here. I'm married. I don't look oh, there. What, what, what do you think the score is going to be? Um, 64 0. 64 to 0. I am glad she said that. So uh, you're going to feel me. And we're, you're going to film us, we're going to film you. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think this And I'll stop it right there. I mean, that was a great time. We had an excellent time at the tailgate party. Um, it actually goes on for a little bit further, but um, we don't necessarily need to go into that. Uh, that lady, I just want to stop it right there for a reason, because that lady was completely belligerent around her kid and stuff. and It was, it was hilarious. We, we enjoyed it. Um, but uh, hopefully we hear from Tyler today so he can uh, actually call in and, and give his case on how it felt to actually live in a red suit. Um, he, as you know, he's a UK blue guy, and and for him to get into a U of L suit like that on UK U of L rivalry day uh, in basketball, oh, we got a call here. Let's go ahead and answer it. Welcome to the Bluegrass Breakdown. Who do I got? Matt, it's Tyler. Tyler, just talking about you. I guess you must be watching the show and watching your ridiculousness um, on your. Uh, oh, interview. you know. Yeah, I'm uh, definitely watching the show. You you sound a little bit under the weather, but I'm glad, I'm glad you could you get it going. It's, it's going good so far. Thanks. I appreciate it. I'm very under the weather. As a matter of fact, it's hard to work. I'm out in Bowling Green right now, and actually this is my hotel room behind me. If people haven't realized that by now. But, uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of difficult to keep my voice clear and uh, keep from sneezing or coughing or hawking up loogies at the same time. So, Are you there? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, I feel like 
I'm really, it's kind of hard to hear you, to be honest, right now. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that North Carolina beat Duke last night. I know it has nothing to do with what's going on the show, and the Cats are going to go win a championship. I'm going to go ahead and phone and watch the show because it's kind of hard to hear you, but Matt, you're doing good, and Kai still's number one. Yes, I, I completely agree. Yes, and, and I'll actually play that clip. I had it queued up here, and I'll play that for you guys because it actually, that was an exciting game. If you didn't see that, there was two minutes left in the, the Duke North Carolina game. And uh, North Carolina completely blew it and let the lead go to nothing. Uh, and uh, Duke actually ended up winning the game. And, and that's pretty phenomenal for them to be down 10 points and come back in two minutes and be able to do that. Uh, it, it's just phenomenal. And, and Austin Rivers, as people have been saying all over Twitter, has basically um, no fear at all. And uh, here is uh, Austin Rivers. He is coming. Uh, and here's the actual sound clip from Dick Vitale calling it. Who will take the shot? Can he make the pin? Yes! Oh! 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 Unbelievable! An incredible finish here in Chapel Hill. Freshman Austin Rivers with a three at the buzzer to win it for Duke. And this place is in stunned silence right now. They are going to review the shot, the officials to make sure. Final score, 85 to 84. And as I said, they were down. Uh, North Carolina was up by 10 um, with two minutes left. And that's just a phenomenal feat for any team, even though us as Kentucky fans or Louisville fans don't generally like uh, North Carolina or Duke. What we do like is we like the fact that uh, a team can come come back. you got to respect that. They can come back from 10 points within two minutes and actually win the game. That's clutch. And from a freshman to in, hit the final shot and have um, just so much confidence in his own shot to make a shot like that uh, at the very end is, is pretty phenomenal. So um, we're going to go play another quick clip here. And actually this clip is uh, another best of. This is uh, actually going to be one of our callers. Harry Carey called into one of our shows the other day. And it actually gave us a very good perspective um, as some of the weirdos that can call in from time to time. And here it is. Welcome to the Bluegrass Breakdown. How you doing tonight? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Doing great. Can I have your name? My name's Harry. How you doing tonight, Harry? I'm, I'm doing great. I hope you're doing good. I just got to say something. I hope that Louisville wins every game on their schedule. So it makes Kentucky look even worse than they already are. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Harry Carey we got here. I, I hope that too. Believe it. <laughs> Harry, you've been gone for long. Where have you been? Oh, you know, I've been just around eating hot dogs. Feel great. <laughs> That's you, good. You been drinking tonight, Harry? Oh, you know, the usual. A few Budweiser's to wash down everything I ate. <laughs> what was for dinner tonight? Oh, the big old bratwurst <laughs> with a hot dog on the side. <laughs> now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Harry, I thought you were six feet under. What's that again? Say that I can't hear quite well by old age. Well, not only old age, but you're dead. So how are you calling right now? Oh, you know, we have a lot of perks up here in heaven when we want to talk about the things. Fair enough. Do you think Louisville will win out? Oh, I think there's a good shot of it. I mean, there's a few tough teams, but I think they can do it. I'm not too sure, but, you know. I think Harry just went a little Forrest Gump on us. <laughs> <laughs> well, Harry, thank you for the call. You have a great night. Hopefully, call in next week. Oh, I'll definitely do that. You gentlemen have a great night. You too. Thank you. Forrest Gump a little bit uh, on us. Uh, but we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, but uh, we're going to try to quick, take a quick break. Uh, anytime you do it on location, I guess you have issues like this, but we're, apparently some of our audio is being uh, fed in an incorrect way. But we'll be right back. This is the Bluegrass Breakdown Sports Show, and I am your friendly producer, Matt McCarthy. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Bluegrass Breakdown. How you doing tonight? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Doing great. Can I have your name? My name's Harry. How you doing tonight, Harry? I'm, I'm doing great. I, I hope you're doing good. Welcome to the Bluegrass Breakdown. How you doing tonight? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? 
Welcome back to the Bluegrass Breakdown. We have Danielle Shelton on the line. Danielle, how are you? I am fantastic. How are you? I am doing marvelous. What's all that background noise? It seems I'm good. on a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> so you're calling into the show from a treadmill. Am I understanding that correctly? I am currently like five and a half miles into a run. Wow. Uh, yeah, I probably called I'm you later. I'm just showing you how hardcore... I'm working to beat you in our weight loss thing. Going <laughs> yeah. down. Yeah, and those that don't know that Danielle is actually, me and her are in a weight loss competition. And uh, apparently she's doing a little better than I am. I'm here drinking bourbon and doing a show while she's running five and a half miles on a treadmill, which is completely ridiculous, and calling into the show at the same time. I can't hear you at all. That's the only problem with this treadmill. Hold on a second. I'm going to try something. <laughs> yeah, we're well, apparently we're having some audio issues okay. with the second... Uh, uh, can you hear here. me at all? I can hear you fine, yeah, but I, apparently you Okay, can't cool. Hear. I can hear you better now. Okay. Yeah, good. So, so what have you been talking about tonight, Mr. Matthew? We actually just showed uh, the Duke, North Carolina game last night, and I know that you were watching because you're an avid basketball fan, um, and it was yeah. pretty phenomenal. Two minutes left, and they come. Duke comes back from 10 points and beats Carolina. What's your thoughts on that game? Did you actually watch, watch it? Hold on. I can't hear you. This is like... Okay, say that one more time. The treadmill maybe maybe it was not a very good idea. <laughs> no, we're, no, I think it's a uh, it's more me than anything because we're actually having uh, a little bit technical. Can you hear me better now? Can I, can I what? Can you hear me better now? Yeah, I can. I put my headphones in. I didn't know it would work with my headphones. Okay. I'm not very good at technology. <laughs> well, we were talking about the Duke North Carolina game, and, and I just showed the actually played the clip of the Dick Vitale call. Uh, where they came back from 10 points and actually ended up winning the game over North Carolina. And I know that you were watching it, the game, right? Uh, I definitely watched the game. It was insane. Um, I actually kind of almost stopped watching the game when I, toward the end, North Carolina was up pretty big. I figured it was over. And then I kind of, I left the room and I started seeing stuff on Twitter about how they were coming back. So I was like, all right, I'll turn it back on. And at that last point shot, I know... The last second shot, I know uh, people don't really like Austin Rivers very much, but you got to give him props on that one. Yeah, and that's, has to. Yeah, and that's like, the same. I mean, that's the hype. That's the hype we've been hearing all the time about Austin Rivers. There it is. Can he do it every game? I don't, I don't know about that, but <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Yeah, that, that's, you got to respect it. Yeah, that's what we were saying. We were saying that uh, for him to be a freshman and take that kind of a clutch shot from that far beyond the arc, it could have been a really stupid move if he would have missed it, but everyone's praising him now because he knocked it down. I mean, it was it was a great shot. It was one, it's one of those things that's either going to go in or it's not. It would have been a completely different story today had it not gone in. But, I mean, he was on fire. I mean, he was 95% going to make that shot. It was <laughs> unbelievable. But also, yeah. Harrison Barnes was on fire last night, too. I mean, there was a good point where they were just going back and forth, back and forth, just drowning threes. Yeah, yeah. We won't talk about the game it too was, long. Just I, lo because I love it. You what? So we won't talk about that game too long just because both, as UK fans, both me and you, we also hate North Carolina and Duke, so we won't. I heard UK yeah. played Tuesday. I don't remember. It wasn't any good. UK? <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't remember. It must not have been that big of a game. No, no, it wasn't a big game at all. And Anthony Davis is not a very good player either. He's He, he doesn't quite he's, gosh, bring man, to he's shaky. <laughs> you just don't know. You just don't know coming in if he's going to be good or not. Yeah, I know. He's too inconsistent. Don't know. Then you need to put in Eloy. We all know what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah. Eloy Vargas in the game, the centaur, <laughs> will always provide more output. Yeah, by that, I mean, we, <laughs> he's a, no, the game against Florida was amazing. I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm incredibly pessimistic at the beginning of games. I always think they're going to lose. It doesn't matter who they're playing. I just always think they're going to lose. And if it's a big game, I get really nervous. So I was super nervous <laughs> before the Florida game. Like, I hadn't felt like that since the UConn game. Well, it, just, it seems like Florida oh, always so plays great. as well. So, but Danielle, so I think we're having like a little audio Florida issues. Is so. Amazing game. So did Marcus Teague. Oh yeah, Marcus Teague played really well. No, yeah, he's been stepping up lately, and I've been proud of him for that too. Because, and at first, that's a lot of what was thinking that the team was lacking was a solid point guard. Even though we had a lot of expectations for Marcus Teague, he hadn't really been 
I guess, outputting what we expected of him and the fact that he's actually stepping up now and providing not necessarily high point totals, but overall uh, success is uh, is great for the team. Yeah, I mean, he's developing really well. I'm not sure he necessarily – I think people want him to be Brandon Knight, John Wall. They don't want him to be that. I don't think he is going to be that necessarily. He just needs to be good at what he does. I think he is definitely getting there. His numbers are showing it. He's getting more confident, hitting more shots, and it's really working for him. Yeah, Danielle, really like thank, where it's going. Yeah, th thanks for calling in, Danielle. Um, I, I know that you're running on a treadmill, and I hate that. I hate you for that because, I'm again, like I said, I'm a uh, – uh, I'm loving it. I'm getting off here, though. My legs are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Danielle, it's you have a good night, okay? A over six. Thanks for, thanks for having me. See you later. That was um, UK host Danielle Chilton for the Bluegrass Breakdown. I think we are having a little bit of internet connectivity issues with some of the calls, so I apologize if you're having issues with hearing some of the people. Um, anytime you're in a hotel and you've got uh, a 1,000 people on the internet one time, I guess you can have issues. But we're going to get back to what we were talking about here. We talked about the Duke-North Carolina game for a long time, and we probably shouldn't have, but uh, you know, it was just an amazing game, even though... Again, we're, we're not fans of that team, but uh, uh, even though you actually were able to come back from that deficit within two minutes, you got to respect it. And uh, the next clip we're going to play, speaking of basketball, and one of the most renowned, um, I guess, radio people you can call in the industry is Radio Ron. And Radio Ron uh, did an interview with us probably a couple months ago, and he's a phenomenal talent, and actually he just... Recently, if you listen to Kentucky Sports Radio, he did a America's Got Talent. Uh, they flew him out there. So you know when they fly you out there and pay for your stuff that uh, you're expecting to see him on TV. So we hope we do. But here's our interview with Radio Ron Chilton. Welcome back to the Bluegrass Breakdown Radio Show. Uh, we've had a, a, a good little start to tonight, talking a little bit of the Joe Paterno situation in Penn State. Everybody knows that we don't need to get into that again. And uh, But... We got somebody online, somebody special tonight, uh, an senior Olympic gold medalist and a great, great radio personality, Ron, Radio Ron Chilton. Ron, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you? Now, which one is this, Tyler or Kelly? This is Tyler right now. Kelly, Kelly's uh, kind of got scared. He does, He gets scared of talking to live people. <laughs> oh, come on. I don't believe that for a minute. Uh, yeah, I'm doing fine, Tyler. I'm glad to be on. Thank you very much for inviting me. And you said he was a uh, gold medalist in the Senior Olympics, but you didn't actually allude to exactly what he has done in that realm. Rom, do you mind sharing what your least recent feat was in the Senior Olympics? Oh, not at all. Not at all. Uh, my wife claims that I brag about it every <laughs> chance I get. <laughs> I um, started about 15 years ago. I'll quickly just give you a little background. 15 years ago, and I decided that I was not going to sit around on the front porch and rust out and or collect stamps or uh, watercolors. I, I was going to enter track and field. So um, I finally settled on 15 events, 100, 200, 400, 800, 1,500 meters, shot put, discus, javelin, high jump, long jump, triple jump, and 1,500 meter race walk. I entered all of these events in the most recent Kentucky State Olympic Games in Murray. And in the Back to Bluegrass Breakdown Radio Show, uh, we've had a, a, a good little start to tonight, talking a little bit of the whole entire interview again because as far as the time goes we've got a short time to actually present you with a lot of UK news uh, but that was Radio Ron you heard a small part of it um, and uh, uh, he's always a, a great character and actually if you haven't heard Radio Ron is doing a race um, we've presented on the show a couple times haven't promoted it too much but uh, Radio Ron is uh, doing a race between one J.R. Kaiser uh, here in the early spring and we hope to bring him in where they're going to do a race, um, and I, I'm not sure exactly what Radio Ron's age is, but I think he's definitely at least in his upper 70s, low 80s, and JR is a 29-year-old, um, I don't want to call him fat butt, but he's, he's, he's out of shape is what it is. So uh, they're going to race a 29-year-old against a upper 70s, lower 80s-year-old, 
uh, and it's going to be a fun time. Kaisco is going to be there to basically bring you everything, all the all the uh, exciting race uh, features, and, and we're going to have a nice promo, promo video for it. It's going to come here shortly. Uh, Radio Ron is a great guy, and we do appreciate him coming on the show. Um, we're going to take another quick break, and we'll have another interview for you, and we'll talk a little bit of UK UFL news as well. So this is Matt, and this is the Bluegrass Breakdown Sports Show. We'll be right back. No, I don't know. You said it. How do I know? You said I'm funny. How the fuck am I funny? What the fuck is so funny about me? Tell me. Tell me what's funny. Get the fuck out of here, Tommy. <laughs> you motherfucker. I almost had him. I almost had him. Yes, trick yet. One of the best clips from one of the best movies. <laughs> Uh, Goodfellas, um, it is actually a birthday today, 69 years old, Joe Pesci um, for, from the Goodfellas, and that's actually one of my favorite clips of any movie, uh, it's just hilarious, I, I love that movie, most people do, it's one of the classics, but he's 69 years old today, happy birthday Mr. Joe Pesci, and uh, and now that we're back, and, and I know it's uh, uh, a little odd that I'm wearing sunglasses inside of a hotel room, um, indoors which is is pretty odd in itself but uh, uh, there's a reason behind it and I guarantee you'll you'll like that uh, but uh, the reason why is uh, we actually have a new sponsor on the show Brucey's and they are actually uh, not only a very functional uh, product but they're main mainly made for the tailgating industry and the Brucey's as you can see they protect you from uh, UVs from the Sun but at the same time they are bottle openers which is pretty phenomenal product. I mean, they, they serve two uses, like I said. They protect you from the sun, but also, anytime you're tailgating, there's sun everywhere. And also, you're going to be able to pop your beers just by taking your sunglasses off and popping it open. And uh, that be that being available for you. So, what we're going to do right now is actually, I'm going to pull a little uh, Corona out of my uh, sack here. And uh, I'm actually going to use them just to show you the functionality of the product. You can go to brucees.com. I'll show you some images here. Uh, this is actually a, a high quality image you can see of the product itself. You can see the very back. It's got both sides have uh, metal embedded into the uh, back of the sunglasses themselves. So you actually have a, a very sturdy, very durable. It's not going to break on you. Um, here's an image of it actually um, opening a bottle. So you can actually do that with the Brucees. They're a very good product and you should definitely uh, check them out. Brucees.com is the website. And um, you can check it out again, Brucey's.com. We're actually going to open an online store here shortly. With and I'm having some more technical difficulties here. I'm not able to remove the image. But what we'll do, I guess we'll have the image on here for a little bit until I can figure it out. There we go. It's removed now. But uh, anyways, Brucey's.com is the website. You can check it out here. Here's an image of their website. Basically, it tells you the story behind Brucey's. It tells you uh, the products that they offer. Um, and there is actually even a blog similar to what we have on their site to talk about all the news uh, behind Brucey's. But uh, yeah, again, Brucey's.com. Check them out. We're going to have them on our, on our uh, website shortly as far as our main content goes um, when we open our online store. So... Uh, Brucey's.com. We do appreciate you becoming a sponsor of the show. It's really important for us to have people that are willing to uh, sponsor the show because we are gaining popularity. Obviously, thousands and thousands of people watching the show, but not really. But anyways, but uh, uh, here you go. Here's uh, again the Brucey's, and uh, thank you guys. And I'm gonna actually indulge in a little one. And I know it's work time. I'm not supposed to be doing this, but you got to do what you got to do. It's time. There you go that simple and um, next I'm gonna play a clip this is actually um, one of our favorite interviews mainly because we've actually had two interviews with this guy Tony T.C. Sollings is a actor um, and he actually does a great job he's been in two movies so far made by the same company and, and they uh, uh, they do a great job it's a mainly uh, a d d devotional type uh, video uh, type uh, movie but uh, here he is here's T.C. Stalling he's a great uh, actor a great friend of ours and here it is Welcome back to the Bluegrass Breakdown. Uh, we have Tony T.C. Stallings, former uh, football player for the University of Louisville and also now 
uh, color commentary and a hundred other things that he does. Tony, welcome back to the show, man. Uh, pleasure, man. Thanks for having me back. Thanks a lot. Well, let's let's go ahead and get um into it. How was your first year as uh you know broadcasting with Paul Rogers and and them on the show? No, it was good. Actually, uh, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, you know, I I didn't know if if I do a good job of um you know being objective. You know, when I speak about the team and you know you don't want to get on there and talk too much like a player. Um, but, uh, you know, the feedback that I've gotten is people kind of enjoy, you know, the way I, I kind of teach a little bit sometimes. And uh, I guess they say that, I, you know, I just, I just bring a natural uh, feel, you know, and, and get people to play a perspective. So, you know, I can think it's good all I want, but if the people don't like it, then it's not very good, in my opinion. The people kind of dictate the success that you've had. And uh, since I've gotten a lot of positive feedback and a lot of people say they like listening to me, uh, so according to the people, they like it. So they say it's good, then then I'm pleased with it. Well, good. Is this something that you're going to continue to do? Do you know or? Well, I plan to. Uh, you know, there there's a the future is a little um, unclear. You know, in terms of uh, in which direction that the Lord is going to take me. Uh, but uh, you know, I've spoken to uh, you know Paul and, and everybody else that you know works along with the broadcast and uh, let them know that it's something that I like to continue doing, and they. Have told me that they definitely want me to continue to uh, call the game, so uh, I look forward to it as of right now. Absolutely. So, how do you feel about the team's progress? I mean, obviously we had a, a rough start, rough start, um, you know, but you've been able to watch every game. How do you feel that they've progressed? Oh, I think they've progressed very well, especially uh, offensively. I think uh, in the beginning, the defense was something that was a bright spot pretty much all throughout the year. Uh, you got consistent play from them. You know, you saw those guys continue to mature and fly around, and I think they were pretty much the nucleus of the team. And then after, like, the first four or five games, uh, you know, we, we've got, you know, a two and four record, and, you know, the offense is averaging, you know, 16 points a game, and that's just not something that, you know, I'm not only used to seeing, but I'm not even used to being on a team like that. You know, we, we're used to scoring, you know, you know, 40, 50 points and being one of the top offensive units in the, in the country. And I know the fans are used to seeing that too. So that wasn't looking very well. And, and, and I honestly just didn't know how far this team could go scoring uh, so low. But then, you know, the, the offense kind of started to come together. You know, we had a, a, a change as far as the offensive coordinator goes and, uh, you know, and, and some things that would – in the beginning, it looked like, you know, we were on our way going down. But here comes Teddy Bridgewater. You know, here comes, uh, you know, the receivers are starting to make plays. We're, we're, we got three guys that are running the ball well. Then that's thing you know, you know, we're, we're putting up some points, you know, and, and scoring well. So when the offense came and started holding up their weight and matching up with the defense's effort, uh, and then good overall special teams play, and then the coaches putting together great planning. And you get a season that uh, I think the Cardinals can be proud of. Hey, TC, this is Kelly Patrick. I had spoke with you the last time you were on. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. Thank you, and again, thanks for having me on. Oh, yeah. thanks so much for coming on. Um, one of the other things we wanted to talk about was maybe a little bit generic. You probably talked about it a lot. But how would you describe Charlie Strong as a coach overall um, and how the team has progressed and kind of how the program has changed over his two years since he's been at Louisville? I, I just think Charlie Strong is a sensational, uh, genuine motivator. Um, when you got a guy like him, uh, and I've been fortunate enough to be on the, the plane rides with him and the team, you know, when we go to away games, and, and I just watch the way that he relates to the team. You know, I watch the way that they respect him. And, you know, you don't see a guy that's sitting there with his eyebrows pointed down and, and mean and, and, you know, that he's getting the respect of his players that way. He's getting the same respect that like a dictator would get, but he doesn't act. He doesn't. He doesn't act that way. You know, he doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, you know, yell at anybody and, and embarrass anybody or have you kind of on pins and needles. He is just a fantastic motivator, and I think he is an example first. I think he works hard at what he does. He brings it to the table every day. It's almost like you know, he said, "Hey, look, I won't ask you to do anything that I won't do myself." And uh, and he's gaining respect to the players. You know, if I'm playing, I'll, I'll run through a brick wall for a guy like that. And I think he's got the team thinking that way. And once you get the team to do anything you'll tell them to do and they respect you, 
then I think that's when you get, you know, great effort. That's when you get guys diving for balls and sacrificing their bodies and, and just not caring what happens to them because they love the coach so much. And so I think he's got their respect. I think he's got their love. And then, and that in turn, uh, you know, gives these guys, gives him the ability to get the most out of the team. And that's what, and that's what I see the most out of him. Um, I, I think that, that, that alone will take him very far, uh, with this scene and, you know, I expect to see great things just simply because he's just a character guy. Uh, and that's just not even giving him credit for the X's and O's, which I think is fantastic to watch him, you know, run the defense the way he does and, and allow his coaches to coach the team offensively. But, but again, just the type of guy he is, the character he is, you know, I, w- I will love, uh, and I think any uh, player will love to play for someone like that. Well, uh, one last question about football real quick is, is, you know, you were in the the 2000 Liberty Bowl. What's it like for a player? What does that mean to a player to, to you know, reach the success of getting to a bowl? Well, you know, over the years, you know, there have been more and more bowls that have come along. But, you know, it, it was always uh, quite a few bowls, you know, 20, 25 bowls. Now I think it's up to like 35 bowls. But you look around the country and know that there's hundreds and hundreds of football teams and you were fortunate enough and good enough to make one. And so you already feel special. You feel a little bit more elite than the rest, knowing that, hey, during the holidays, you can be at home watching all these games. Uh, but instead now, uh, you know, at, at 7 o'clock or 5 o'clock or 2 o'clock, whatever the day is, everybody in the country is going to be watching you play. So for me, I look at it as an opportunity, you know, uh, to, to show the world, you know, how good I can play. I was proud that the world will be watching my team, you know, play. And so it's exciting. And, and then, you know, it's all the different festivities that come along with it. You know, you're excited about that. You're excited to be playing a team out of conference so you can match your talents versus, you know, an ACC team, a SEC team, Big Ten, or whatever it may be. So there's a lot of things that go into that. And if you got pro aspirations, you know, that the, uh, the NFL or CFL or whoever, they're watching that game as well. So, I uh, your family's coming in, so it, it's an exciting time, and and in essence, that's your championship game. Whoever wins this game will be the champion of that bowl, and so uh, it gives you momentum going into next year. So there's a lot of positive things going to a bowl, and it's so much better to be going to one than to be at home watching one. Again, we got a uh, Tony T. C. Stallings on a uh, former Louisville uh, running back, and a- you're on the on the uh, line with us now. Who we got here? Hey, man, this is John. John, hey, how did, nice to, uh, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. What uh, what do you want to talk about? Oh, I just wanted to get one of those glasses. You want to get one of those glasses? I just want to pay those Brucey's. They look awesome. I was drinking a beer right now, and I thought, why not? <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, they are pretty awesome. And if, if, in, in, in case you don't didn't actually watch the show and, and at that point and see what I was talking about, Brucey's are pretty phenomenal. I didn't mention also they come with their own koozie, and um, their I guess their slogan is "Real Men Pry," but they come in their own koozie, so you actually have a koozie for your beer, and you can also have your glasses, which will ha- open the beer bottles themselves. So it's, the functionality of it is ridiculous. It's the coolest co- tailgating product out there. Well, that's awesome. I'll get on that site and get a pair now. Uh, I like the show. You're doing good, man. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> there we go, another caller. We have random uh, callers from time to time, but uh, they enjoy the Brucies, which is always good. Um, we want to get to a little bit of UK and U of L news, and the main reason we want to talk about it is because UK has been phenomenal uh, with it late. And here, well, okay, maybe not. Anyways, uh, Kentucky played South Carolina. 86 52 was the final score, which was a complete and utter blowout. Um, the actual game itself was pretty phenomenal. I mean, Kentucky themselves, they expected to win. I think, the, I don't remember the exact line, but it was pretty uh, pretty reasonable, maybe 15 points or something. But uh, UK ended up winning 86-52. Uh, Anthony Davis, 22 points. Deron Lamb, 18 points. Uh, of course, Anthony Davis had eight blocks. Um, Terrence Jones had a block. Michael Kidd, Gilchrist had a block uh, as well. But overall, they played phenomenal, and it's what we've wondered um, about this team for the longest time. We know they played well two, three weeks in a row now, and this team is just coming together phenomenally, and, and we can't expect any more from, from what they do. Anthony Davis should bring so much to the table. 
he is definitely going to be um, one of the best players to ever come out of Kentucky and uh, definitely be a number one draft pick next year. But they also play the Florida Gators. Um, this was actually a game that I was worried about. I was wondering whether uh, Florida always scares me just because it seems they always play well. They shoot the three well, which is uh, hard on us. Um, but uh, they end up winning that game 78-58 by 20 points, which beat the line, I think, which is what, nine points or something similar to that. Uh, but Kentucky played out. They played phenomenal. Uh, in this game, you had uh, Anthony Davis, who pulled out with 16 points, but that wasn't the main story. He had four blocks uh, in that game, uh, one assist, uh, six rebounds. The guy was uh, amazing again, and the whole team overall played very well. Jerome Lamb was actually the overall leading scorer of this game with 18 points. Uh, Kid Gilchrist had 13 points. Uh, he had 13 rebounds which uh, beat the next highest uh, person on our team, which was Terrence Jones with seven, which uh, is, is pretty amazing. And this team is really coming together at the right time. And even off the bench, Darius Miller had nine points, which is always great to see with your senior leadership, Darius Miller pulling it out. Uh, make sure you follow us on KentuckySports.co. Follow us on Twitter at KY Sports Co. Go to our website, KentuckySports.co. You can see all the latest news and information. Um, we've got another caller here. Welcome to the Bluegrass Breakdown. This is Matt. Who we got? Man, it's Tyler again. Tyler, what are you doing? I, I, was, I needed to call you back. I know we had some technical difficulties earlier, and it seems like the past few callers have been okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it has been. It's, it's kind of difficult broadcasting from a hotel room. You can never expect what the Internet's going to bring yeah. you. So we're glad that we I can bring it to that. you. I Where are you exactly? I am in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and I... Uh, uh, I like to travel around a bit, and uh, I'm sitting here in a hotel room, and uh, I'm doing what I should be doing. And we could have easily skipped the show this week, but it's nice to bring some of the favorite clips uh, that we have brought to our fans to uh, be able to broadcast them on the show tonight. So I'm glad to do it. Yeah, that's awesome. We're, we're glad for for you to do it. We're, it's nice for me and Kelly and Danielle and uh, John to take a little off night. <laughs> and I would like to go and say since. I'm it is Thursday the ninth. Happy birthday to John Hancock. Oh, is it his birthday today? I didn't even know that. How how am I? I'm not a very good friend, am I? I don't even know his birthday, and you do. So that's that's uh, that's great to hear. Happy birthday, John Hancock. Yeah, definitely. Happy birthday, John. He's almost thirty. He's Twenty nine. Got a year left. But uh, I was listening to the show, of course, and I heard you were talking about you paying for it and how awesome we are. You were talking about Marcus Teague earlier with Danielle and. What I and I totally agree with what you all have been saying. You know, I, he, I wouldn't say he struggled early in the season too much. It's just he wasn't our John Wall, or Brandon Knight type player. But neither of those two guys beginning their respective career. Did, they, I mean, they did the same thing. They came around and they won and whatnot. And the same as what Teague is doing now. He had, uh, I believe, his tennis the other day. He had Brandon hit five turnovers. But that comes when you got a group of good guards down at Florida. And like you said with Anthony, just he's not good at all. <laughs> he's terrible, isn't he? He's horrible. No, no, and, and I agree with you. He he definitely is not a John Wall, and you can't compare him to him. But at the same time, he does play well. He does exactly his role, and that's that's what's important when uh, when you're when you have basically all the freshmen in the world that you need. Um, he actually plays his role and does it well. So, Marcus Teague is the man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. I just want to go into the kind of on some trouble earlier. Let, get, let you get back to the show so some the viewers want to watch the actual highlights. And not listen to Paul talk, so keep it up. I'll see you all next Thursday. All right, Tyler. You have a good night. The second time Tyler has called tonight, which we do appreciate that because it gives me a little bit of break from trying to host by myself. And even them, they, they, they're they the main host. They don't have to deal with uh, being by their self for a full hour, which I, I can't say. I, it, it, I give much respect to Drew Diener. Uh, to those that actually have to host a whole show by themselves and not with a co-host because it's pretty difficult to talk for a full hour. But when you got a team like Kentucky, you can definitely do that. But we were talking about the Florida uh, game, um, and, and again, we they lived uh, and played up to their expectations as we knew they would. And um, as you know, they, they've got uh, several more games coming up, which is coming near towards March Madness. But uh, a couple things as far as news goes, we want to definitely – point on the uh, McDonald's All-American um, information was released as far as which players would actually be involved in that and let me see if I can pull that information up for you here I've got uh, yes um, Alex Poitras which is uh, 
committed to Kentucky, and Archie Goodwin, also with Kentucky, um, are, are all made the uh, announced the roster for 2012 McDonald's High School All American game. Um, and also, you got Shabazz Muhammad on there, which is currently undecided, but a lot of people think that Shabazz is definitely going to be, or Shabazz, however you want to put it, is going to be a Kentucky commit, which we all hope because that would be a phenomenal thing for us. Um, but uh, that's, that's good information to know there. Uh, and also, Anthony Davis has climbed to the number two spot um, in the player year to watch. And that's that's a great thing to see um, because obviously with the stats, as we talked about, Anthony Davis has been uh, a great player for us. And uh, also he's on the player year watch, which is great as well. Um, he is, if I can't remember correct, I'm going to pull up the stats here on this. Um, he's just behind Thomas Robinson from Kansas, uh, 6'10", 237 pounds. Uh, he went for 25 points just uh, against Missouri when they lost uh, recently. But uh, I honestly think if Anthony Davis continues to play the way he has been recently, he's going to be a phenomenal uh, athlete. and He's going to be a phenomenal choice for player of the year. There's no reason why he shouldn't win player of the year as long as he continues to do what he's been doing. And even though we're coming up with our hardest part of the schedule at this point against Vanderbilt next coming up, I think uh, he's definitely going to, to to show us exactly what he's made of. But next, we're going to go with another segment again. Um, we actually had we're going to go to the U of L side. We've played a lot of stuff uh, uh, UK side um, with Radio Ron. We've had Tony Stallings at U of L. We're going to go back with U of L and Mike Rutherford with uh, uh, the Card Chronicle was actually on our show, and we're going to play that uh, clip here right quick. This is Mike Rutherford, and uh, this was a great clip. It's probably been about a month ago since we talked to him, but uh, he's, uh, again, the most important guy in UofL. So here is his uh, segment with us. Welcome back to the Bluegrass Breakdown Radio Show. We got a great guest on the line, in my opinion at least, probably, arguably, the best blogger in the whole state. Mike Rutherford. How you doing, Mike? Not bad. How are you guys? Doing great. Got to start off by by thanking you for for coming on with us. You uh, provided a lot of great reading material for your site, cardchronicle.com. Uh, def definitely appreciate you coming on. No, oh, no problem. Happy to do it. I'm a big fan of the show. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as many people are across the state. <laughs> um, we got we got a few things we wanted to talk to you about. I guess for starters, uh, I was saying over the over the break. That I heard you on 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 Diener's show this morning, which is good stuff. I really like that. It caught me off guard. I didn't I didn't know you were going to be on there. One one of the things you I, got I didn't know I didn't know I was going to be on there. Drew texted me uh, about ten minutes after I'd woken up and said, uh, you know, you got to go on the top of the hour. I assume the next hour. Turned out he meant five minutes from now, top of the hour. So I I appreciate that, Drew. If you listen, I, I I like how how Drew's been having you come on. I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I haven't seen. So much of him getting like anything like that, but I think that's great. I, I love love hearing you on there. So uh, I was going to mention one of the things that I heard you all talking about was the, as everyone knows, the very prestigious Card Chronicle Man of the Year. And you know, not to get you know, I, I hate starting controversy, but <laughs> how did you? I mean, a tie? Did that really happen? I really, you know, I, I don't know what happened. I, I know I went to sleep. I guess it was the second amount of voting. And Charlie Strong was way up. Which I was sort of surprised. I figured it'd be a two horse race between he and uh, Preston Knowles. And I woke up and all of a sudden Preston Knowles was winning by a little bit. And, you know, I don't, people give me way too much credit for being technologically savvy. I really don't know anything about computers. I don't know anything about designing websites. I basically just use the editor word tool, word tool and write stuff and post it. And that's all I do. But I did wake up. I thought it was a little. It definitely was a little fishy that I woke up. I didn't actually see it. Somebody sent me a message and said, "You know, this thing ended in the exact tie." I checked it out. I think it was like 941 individual votes for, for both those guys, or something like that. But yeah, it was an exact identical tie between Noel and Charlie Strong for uh, the 2011 Card Crackle Man of the Year. As you said, the prestigious honor. Oh, very prestigious. I mean, <laughs> I think two very deserving guys. Charlie Strong, obviously, with the recruitee. And as Tyler here likes to remind me, Clint Hurt have been pulling in, especially even over the last few days. I mean, it's just un certainly unprecedented in this part of the country. What, what do you think about the recruits that have been signing on with the cards lately? Well, it has been. It's been an unreal sort of couple of weeks and really an unreal sort of couple of years. Somebody actually asked me, I think it was two nights ago, 
have you ever seen anything like this in Louisville? And uh, the truth is, we really haven't as far as landing these four star, being in the mix with some five star out of state prospects. Uh, the biggest recruiting year Bobby Pacino had, you know, those two years were headlined by you know, local guys. He got Michael Bush, he got Brian Brom, then he got, uh, you know, Mario Rudia, he got Montel Jones transfer, and those were all guys from the city of Louisville. So these are guys from Miami, you know, the, the hotbed, the center of high school football. And uh, to land, uh, you know, a guy like Nick Burgess, who's been committed to Miami, to maybe land a guy like uh, Keith Brown, who has scholarship offers from virtually everybody, uh, maybe a Nick Thompson on Saturday, it's, it's pretty unreal what these guys have been able to do. And that's not even mentioning, you know, Teddy Bridgewater, Eli Rogers, and those guys from last year. Or, or, or you, you, I don't think you even mentioned the two guys, uh, the tight end, did you? Uh, yeah, the transfers, guess. absolutely. Uh, yeah. Joe Christian was the number two tight end in the country, according to rivals coming out of high school. I think something like the number 43 player overall, because he could play linebacker, he could play fullback, and he still can play those positions if we need him. He's an absolutely huge land. When you look at the, the tight end position, losing Josh Chichester this year, losing Stephon Ball and uh, Nate Nord after next year, I mean, he's going to say, he has a chance to step right in and be a starter from day one. Certainly. Um, let's see here. One of the, the hot topics, at least within our site, has been kind of, you know, I, I exaggerate a little and I get excited. I am a Cards fan. Uh, Russ Smith, I, I always like to, first, you know, full disclosure, I like to throw out ridiculous comparisons. <laughs> when Gorgie Jang earlier this season was – perfect from the field i jokingly said on my facebook gorgie is the next bill walton um so i've been saying you know jokingly that that russ smith is you know alan iverson or kemba walker and it's kind of gotten under some people's skin um in the site what who would you compare russ smith to i think russ is russ I, I, he's one of those people you just you cannot compare him to anything you certainly can't compare him to anyone who's played at louisville i think it's just yeah, I've deemed it the, the Russ, this Russ Smith thing, I think it's the, uh, the forward phrase that I've just used, because there's no, I mean, nobody saw this coming. I mean, there were some people last year who said, you know, I kind of like the way he does this, I kind of like the way he does that, but there was no one who was going to say, he's going to be your second leading scorer heading into January, and he's going to score 30 points at Kentucky at Rupp Arena. And that, that, that wasn't Russ Smith, it wasn't him at the beginning of the year, it wasn't him at all last year. I, I don't, he does, like Rick Martino said, he does things that nobody else on this team does, and Patino even said, I think he does stuff that nobody's ever had at Louisville does. He just, he just, he has no conscience. And he can get into the lane at will. He takes ridiculous shots, but he makes ridiculous shots. I think he's, he's, you know, he's second on the team in scoring. Uh, he's, I think, third in the Big East Conference in shots attempted and also second in steals. He just, uh, the, the numbers just, they don't make any sense when you look at them. And this, you know, the fact that he's not starting. I mean, he plays, he's playing 22, 25 minutes a game. And putting up just absurd stat lines. I, 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 if you ask me to compare him to somebody, I, I can't do it. Which is why I think we need to get the R. Smith off the back of a jersey and just put Russ there because it's just he's Russ. He, there's, there's just there's no other way to accurately explain it. Now, being a man who has started many, and that was Mike Rutherford from the Card Chronicle. Um, and you can check his website again, CardChronicle.com. We had a good time with him. Um, we also want to talk about some news that was recently. Um, released, I guess, last night that broke, that uh, Wayne Blackshear is now cleared to play um, per Rick Pitino in one of his press conferences here recently, which could be good news. Uh, well, it's definitely, I guess, good news for UofL since they've de been dealing with so many in in injuries lately. Uh, but uh, you also have to wonder, when you bring somebody in with a talent like that that hasn't really played all year, that's going to come in and... Uh, possibly mess up what they have going. I mean, they have a, a lot of good things going for them. They do have uh, uh, four or five wins in a row. I can't remember off the top of my head, but they, they are doing well. Um, and to bring somebody in that hasn't actually played all year could mess up some of the uh, relationships and the uh, smoothness, I guess you'd call it, that uh, they are experiencing recently. But uh, anyways, we're going to go to the next interview here. This is with uh, Cameron Mills, and I, I would have to say this is by far my favorite. This is my number one pick for one of the best interviews we have had. Uh, Cameron Mills joined us, um, I guess it was about a month ago, and he was a phenomenal interview. He's now a preacher. It's uh, cmm21.com is his ministry, and you can hear the interview here on KentuckySports.co, and here it is. Welcome back to the Bluegrass Breakdown Radio Show. Uh, we're here. 
John Hancock here, Tyler Boyd to my right, the best producer in the world, <laughs> Matt McCarthy, and we have Danielle Chilton over there. We also have UK great Cameron Mills. How are you doing on today, sir? I'm doing fine, guys, and you all? Uh, doing well, doing well. Doing pretty good tonight, Cameron. How are you doing? Good. Doing great. I'm uh, actually uh, um, down in uh, North Carolina getting ready to pick up a brand new puppy tomorrow morning. Oh, nice. Nice. So, uh, yeah. I think you just about getting gave Daniel. You just about gave Daniel a heart attack. Oh, what kind of puppy is it? <laughs> what kind of puppy is it? Wait a minute, y'all. You all didn't say there was a female. Oh, I forgot. There. Yeah, they, um, <laughs> sorry, they Cameron. Danielle, they but want when to you guys, when we all did your introductions earlier, I just John and Tyler. There wasn't a Danielle. There wasn't a. <laughs> Sometimes a she doesn't talk, Cameron. So I um, apologize. It's Danielle. It's a it's <laughs> a, a, uh, it's a golden retriever. I've had goldens my whole life, and um, had to put my golden of thirteen years down. Mm. Um, he was my first. I think my I want to say my twenty twenty second, twenty third birthday present from my parents, Aww. and I uh, had to put him down mm. a couple months ago, and. Wasn't sure how long I'd, it would take for me to be ready for another one, and uh, it turns out about a month or so. And so I started doing some research and found a really uh, great breeder down here just outside of Charlotte. Yeah, that's I would totally agree with Golden Retrievers are the best. I had Can't one my whole you know childhood <laughs> uh, named it uh, named it Jordan after Michael Jordan back in the day. Is that right? Yeah, it was uh, one of the best that's dogs fun. ever. I, I will agree with that one. Yeah, well, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to meeting him tomorrow. I've, I've just seen pictures of him and not spent any time with him, so. We pick him up tomorrow, so I'm excited. Well, excellent, oh. excellent. Well, let's talk a little bit about, uh, if you don't mind, we'll go ahead and ask you, what do you think about this year's UK team? What, what's impressed you? That's a, a, a seamless transition there, John, from uh, puppies <laughs> to UK I, I apologize. I, I, I did um, my best. You know, well, yeah, I, I didn't give you much choice. Did I? Um, you know what? I, look, they're, they're the number one ranked team in the country. Um, I, I think there's two things that concern me, though. I, you know, watching this team play, um, I guess two big things. Number one, if you go back and watch the Indiana game, um, we are a different team when Anthony Davis goes out with foul trouble. The only player that acted like or looked like he was still in the game and ready to uh, play was Kid Gilchrist, who, you know, he's pr Kid Gilchrist has probably been the most consistent player we've had all year. I think he maybe he's only had one kind of game where, you know, he just didn't have it. And, you know, throughout the course of the season, your best players are going to have two or three games like that. So, um, but when Anthony Davis went out and that in the end game, we looked like we didn't know what we were doing. All of a sudden, the, the, the lane was not clogged up anymore. We didn't have that shot blocking presence. And so we just, we, we looked like we just weren't ready to play for that span while he was out. He comes back in, you know, we're able to make our run and uh, make a game of it until that last second shot by Indiana. Um, you know, the other thing, and it kind of goes hand in hand with that, is um, we're just not very deep. You know, you start getting into our six, um, well, re really our six, because we, we've got really six starters, any one of them can rotate in and start a game. But when you get to seven and eight, you know, you're talking about Eloy Vargas, you're talking about um, Wiltshire, and, you know, neither one of those guys has stepped up. Now, I have to remind myself constantly that Wiltshire is a freshman. Vargas is, I believe, a sophomore. You know, these, these, this is a different college basketball than I, than I was a part of. You know, I had, you know, Myself, I had four years to become the best player I could, I could, and it took four years, uh, I had two and a half, let's say, um, for me to get to the point where I was ready to compete in a Division One college basketball game, where I was ready to go in and not, you know, make a fool of myself. Um, you know, we're asking these guys to do it immediately. Hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It's, it's the way it is right now. It's not fair, but you know what? They've got to come in and be ready to play. But I, I think those are my two concerns that Anthony Davis can't get in foul trouble when you can end the game um, just to clog up that middle and be the great shot blocker he is. And uh, we, we just we don't go very deep. We go about six deep, and that's about it right now. Yeah, I will uh, totally agree with you on the Davis, uh, what you were saying about him uh, in the Indiana game. And I look at the Louisville game as well. He went out, I believe, at the end of the first half, and Louisville, Kentucky was up 13 or 14, and that's when Louisville cut it to you know one possession game. So I will say that he has got to be, in, in my mind, the most – I'd say he affects the game better than anybody in the country. Yeah, and I think that's the right way to put it. He, he, he affects the game. You know, Kid Gilchrist comes in and can do everything. He can score. He can rebound. As a matter of fact, if you go back and watch the Indiana game, if it wasn't for Kid Gilchrist um, just tearing up the boards in that stretch when Davis was out, then we lose that game by 10 or 12. Um, but it, 
Davis affects the game, and I think that's exactly uh, the right way to put it. Because even if he doesn't block your shot, he's going to alter your shot. And if he doesn't alter your shot, you know he's back there. When you turn around in that lane, you know you're going to be staring in a hand that maybe you get it off over him, but you know you've got to at least be thinking about how you're going to do it. And just that split second of a thought um, can uh, can affect your shot sometimes. Now, uh, and what you're saying, you know, you you played from '94 to '98. And, you know, you got those. It's like you said, two and a half, three years of to get you game ready, to get you ready for this college game. And these guys are coming in straight out of high school and playing. We had Derek Anderson on uh, two weeks ago, and we asked him a question about, you know, a little comparison. And he said that these guys would be a, you know, second, third stringers for you all when you 96, 97, 98 team. Just you well, know, because of the the aspect of they, I will tell you this. I will I will defer to Derek on that one because I tell you the one thing I've learned about myself is I am not a great evaluator of talent. I think the hardest thing things that college coaches do, whether it's basketball, football, anything, is look at a high school kid and say, yeah, he can make it on the next level. Um, you know, the guys in the NBA that have to deal with this draft every year. You know, the hardest thing I think they have to do is yeah, this kid can play at the next level. I don't know how they do it because uh, the only one in the last 20, 30 years that I've been right about that I just knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, this kid, of course I say kid, he was older than me at the time, um, is going to make it is a guy named Shaquille O'Neal. I mean, I just don't think there's any doubt that he was going to be a pro player. But everyone else, I just look at him and I just don't know. So if Derek says that these guys would be third, third stringers on our team, then, um, that's fine. That means they would have been on the bench with me. So you know what? It's not just in front of me. Hey, you'd have had a fun bench there. I mean, not that you didn't anyways, but... <laughs> again, we have Cameron Mills oh, on. We had, listen, we had Muhammad Ali on our bench during one game. So really? we, we did have a fun bench. What game? Do you remember what game that was? You know what? I don't. Um, I just remember at one point in the game, uh, Jeff Shepard uh, getting cold cocked by an elbow um, and kind of getting a little bit of a black eye, and he immediately went over and sat down beside Muhammad Ali. And... Um, you know, you just kind of got this funny picture of the two of them talking about, yeah, yeah I've been getting the face <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, real quick, this does kind of bring it up. Did you dunk on Jeff Shepard? I saw your little I Twitter conversation with up. Derek I Anderson. I did, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did you have all the, that yeah, I've been following it since last night. night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff hates it when I bring this up. Because look, it was the only time it ever happened in my four years at UK. Um. <laughs> We were, it was a, it was at the Seaton Center, uh, during one of our, uh, pickup games in the summer. You know, we've got, you know, during, during off season, we're still, uh, we were still on campus taking classes during eight week, some of us took four week classes in May. Um, and we would play. And the reason we were taking classes other than to stay ahead or to catch up for some of us, um, academically is, um, we, we were there on campus and we got to play. We, and, you know, it's one of the things that's so difficult right now for us. And guys, remind me to get back to the story because I definitely want to tell that story. Um, but, you know, these guys now, they don't ever get to play a lot together. You know, the way Coach Cal recruits, and look, I'm not complaining about the way he recruits. I love it. But the way he recruits is these guys are one and done, and everybody knows that, and everyone knows that's just the, that's the way Coach Cal Perry is. He, he gets the best uh, talent in the country. They come in, they're in for a year, and they're gone. Well, it is tough to form camaraderie and to become a true team. You know, the guys that I played with, I was with them at Wildcat Lodge and in the training room and in practice and on the planes, you know, for for two years, three years. And every summer, we play pickup games. And we play every night, well, I say every night, five nights a week. You know, we take off on the weekend. But four or five nights a week, we would play, oh, I don't know, seven, eight, nine pickup games. Um, you know, and the last one would always be the longest because we knew it had to do with our conditioning. But uh, so, it, so anyway, back to the story. Uh, we're at the Seton Center. Um, I think it was right before my senior year, Jeff's senior year, because he had redshirted that year. Um, so he was coming back to uh, playing again. And uh, there was one goal, and I think there was a, there was a cheerleading camp or something going on on the, um, one part of Seton Center. So we were relegated to this one court. But uh, the goal on this one side was was two inches low. Instead of 10 foot, it was 9 foot 10. And um, we're coming down to, to the last uh, you know, game points coming up. And um, I, I, I can't imagine I stole the ball, but either way, I wound up on a fast break, just me and Jeff. Jeff was the defender coming down the other side of the lane. I was coming down the right-hand side. And, you know, when, when you see someone who's got the hop that Shep has, you see them get ready to start, they, they start timing their steps. And I saw, I saw Jeff start timing his steps to go up and pitch my layup because he knew it was coming and I knew it was coming. And so I went up as hard as I could and just at the last minute just stuffed it down as quickly as I could. It wound up being the, the point that won us the game 
And I think I, I just just to just to play a little theater. I think I I don't even think I reacted. I think I dunked it. I walked off the court that won us the game. But I have never let Chef forget about that moment. <laughs> oh yeah, I had to bring that up. I know you. Oh, there you have it. There is the best of the bluegrass breakdown. We didn't quite to get. Uh, exactly what we wanted uh, as far as all the interviews we've done we missed the Oscar Combs segment we had missed the Derek Anderson segment some of those were pretty phenomenal John Renshaw was on the show with us Derek Abney we've had so many great guests uh, on our show we do appreciate all of them for giving us taking time to come out and uh, and, and to speak with the Bluegrass Breakdown um, but uh, that has been it we actually ran a little bit over we're about 10 minutes over what we normally do and that's because I'm having fun uh, I enjoy showing these interviews to you in case you didn't miss them or, or, or you didn't actually catch them when we actually broadcasted them but this is the Bluegrass Breakdown follow us on Twitter again at KY Sports Co go to our website KentuckySports.co to see all the latest in UK and UofL news and Bob City City Bob City Bob City Bob City this is the Bluegrass Breakdown Sports Show. Live City Clips, live, live City Clips. CP, he's out. 3 2, Blake Griff, DeAndre Butler, and we got Billifson. LA, you don't know who you playing with. Got my other chick, gang with my other chick. Sing Corsa, Jack Nicholson. Throw throwback jersey, I ain't selling it. Mom, fresh it, fresh it, peppermint. Red letter.